Here's what we're making today. Obviously, the main program used is After Effects. Let's begin by looking at this as a concept or a technique. That way, it's easier for you to understand this and apply it. Think of it like a canvas where you place each video frame next to each other and you drag a virtual camera over them. And where the seam of the frames are, you blend color and movement to hide the seam, making it seamless. Here are the clips I chose, and here's why. The difference in using video instead of photo means you have to account for the movement within each frame. So typically, you want a video that motivates movement off frame. And so, just use some imagination to identify what videos would work with each other to make this type of transition. This gray corner is what I'm looking for. The natural camera also moves in this direction, which we can exaggerate. In gray, is pretty easy to find in other videos. Import them into After Effects and let's mash them together. Drag your footage into After Effects, trim and slide them around to your liking. Make sure the top track is your second shot. Scale and resize them as needed. Give yourself a little bit of a margin. Don't forget to have your layers in 3D. Create a new null object and a camera. Pick with the camera to the null. When you do that, and you drag the null around, it moves your camera around, which makes it easier to use. Now what we're looking for here is a natural movement from the camera to slide over to the second shot. So what we're going to keyframe is the position and scale of the null object. Now what I'm going to do is slide the second frame here to the left because there's a slight camera movement from the first shot that motivates it to go to the left. Now what we need to do is reposition the virtual camera via the null object over the second frame. Uh, what we want to do is we want to go up and over like this because the motivated movement is, is begging for that, but we'll just end up putting the position keyframe over here and we'll drag the handlebars to make it a smoother curve. Here I'm just looking to smooth out the movement in the keyframes so that it's not so robotic. So I know I'll eventually have to put in uh, some easy ease keyframes, but I'm just getting the pacing right first. And the trick is to meld it correctly with this initial movement of the camera in the first shot. So you can see I dragged out the keyframes because I needed more of them in between. I needed the motion to be longer or slower rather because the first shot's movement is pretty slow. I added a keyframe here in the middle to capture just this whole gray section. Uh, I wanted to eliminate as much of that black as I could. This is where I change the keyframes to easy ease, and I realize uh, you don't want the middle ones in this case to be easy ease. You just want the outside ones to be, because you want it to be one fluid motion from the outsides. And it should look something like this. The pacing here looks good. The movement looks natural like a natural camera movement, we just have to blend the two shots together. Here's an example from a different view of what's going on. I'll select the camera so you can see what it looks at. We're just scrubbing over the first shot into the second shot. Now that we have the movement down, I'll start by adding a motion tile to this first clip. Motion tile just mirrors the edges. It's a cheap cheap way of just copying the texture over on the edges just to extend the width and height a little bit. Next what we would want to do is grab a freeze frame of these clouds right here. So I'm going to duplicate the first layer and rename our layers. Go to time and freeze frame. We're going to grab this freeze frame layer and we're going to put it on top of our our second layer. And so what we need to do, all we really need is this section up here of the clouds. So I'm going to take our masking tool and we're going to grab this texture of the clouds. And we see that our motion tile is kind of floating there on the left, so that's what we're going to disable because we only really need the clouds. The motion tile makes it complicated. And the key here is to leave the positioning of that layer in the same spot so it overlays with the original clouds and all you're going to do is mess with the mass to meld with the second shot. I'm going to grab the feather here 
I'm going to crank it up just so that we can't see any seams of either of the layers. Reposition the mask a little bit, mess with it. You, gotta, you have to fiddle here a lot. And because it's a 3D layer in the 3D space, you don't have to make any keyframes for the layer, which is the convenient part of this method, is that you're just using the keyframes of the camera not of the layers. So here I just had an idea to duplicate that layer for the left side of the frame here to cover up this seam. Thought I'd mirror it so the texture doesn't look too weird and we'll just kind of throw it over here. And again, we don't have to keyframe it because we're moving in 3D space already. So as we scrub through here, you can see that it, it pops on and that's fine, we'll fix that in a minute. But we're just making sure we're covering some of the major seams. We're not clipping here on the top of this frame, which is good. So let's turn on some opacity keyframes here. And we'll kind of blend them on. And because that first freeze frame layer is lined up with the clouds of the first frame, you can't really tell when they come on because they the texture overlays with itself, essentially. And we eventually want to turn them off, and that's why we have the opacity coming back down to zero which creates a new problem in that we see the seam of the second video and, and that's what we're gonna fix right now. Obviously there's a few ways of doing this. You could probably fix it with opacity tinkering of the cloud layers, but I thought I would just add a mask and feather it off the top. The mask is animating correctly because of the 3D space, but we want to push it all the way off frame so that we get rid of this gray cloud and move into this natural fog layer from this clip. So I'm just scrubbing to get the timing right here to move this off frame. Now we're still seeing a seam here, and that's why I'm just moving the keyframe around of the path just to make sure it's it's naturally moving off. And that looks a little better. I'm going to go back to the opacity keyframes and fiddle with these a little bit more. Perhaps quicken them up. And here I'm noticing our second layer popping in and that's a little apparent so I'm gonna slide it forward now I notice this new seam over here so I'm just gonna mess with the mask of that layer to cover it up it's just a lot of tinkering obviously you could grab another cloud layer a freeze frame layer and just mask that side over there that would that would be another way to solve the same problem but I wanted to use as few layers as I could. Now I'm trying to fix the seam here on the top. And for that, I'm just fiddling with the opacity of both the cloud layers so that they stay on as long as I need them and go away when I don't need them. I combine that with elongating the motion of the mask as well so that it slides up in its own time. And just repositioning the whole frame altogether. And because there's no keyframe for the position of it, it works out. You're just using the camera. You can always go back to your null object, which is your camera, and slide the frame to where it needs to be after you've tinkered with everything. So here I'm just kind of moving it down just to get rid of that seam on the very top and it shouldn't make any drastic changes. Now we're just reviewing looking for seams and where they might be popping up, making sure our clouds look okay and fade away at a good time. And here I'm noticing this black corner, it was the mask path of this second layer here. So we just want to make sure those go all the way off frame. Don't forget to Control save your project. So now we're just reviewing the motion here, checking for seams again. We have a little bit down here, but that's easily fixable. We're just getting the technique here. I'm noticing this black corner popping off just like the other side. And so we'll do the same and make sure that mask travels all the way off frame. 
quick enough. And altogether, it makes a pretty seamless transition here. Some notes and tips. Things that would help with blending this further. Color. Match each clip to the same color grade. Motion blur. You can add motion blur to hide the layers. And obviously sound effects help. I won't show you how I do those for sake of time. Here's the final example. And don't forget to subscribe.